I say reckless talk, but I got expensive habits. Don't step in sores. I'm a real one. Check my fabric. Look at my fabric. I add this Atlas high point way. I got a passion mixed with action, boy. Don't play. Look at my fabric. I add this Atlas high point way. I got a passion mixed with action, boy. Don't play. All right, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are, Don from Kenya Goodness TV, and I'm here joined with Kwame. Kwame, my bro, what's going on? You faring on all right? Yes, we're good, we're good, bro. Uh, yeah. We won our game yesterday, feeling good, yeah. Yeah, yeah come man, on, things, Ugandans. Things, yeah, definitely, things are good, by the way. We won our game, just like you mentioned yesterday, still top of the league. Everything's actually going perfectly all right. All you need to do is just make sure that, you know, win each and every game, because, you know, right now, things are really thick at the top. So you lose the game, it's curtains for you. But now switching gears, actually, uh, the topic that we're going to talk about today, quite a sensitive topic, an interesting topic, a learning topic as well, by the way. So the topic today is financial management in football. You know, this is a topic, uh, you know, as fans, we forget, we forget that, you know, football football is just like any other job. You know, these guys spend, footballers spend most of the time just playing football. You know, it's not like maybe some of us were employed you probably maybe have a side hustle in the middle of that side hustle you know you learn some business skills and whatnot a footballer's work is basically wake up go go to football train blah 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 repeat so financial management in football is actually a very 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 uh interesting topic that you know we basically just want to talk about and basically one of our very own one of our very own best defenders you already know what happened to him emmanuel Lebeau such a sad story it's really sad by the to see uh you know a footballer of that caliber uh life just go down the drain like that i mean kwame we're basically talking about this with you off camera and uh i thought it's a topic yes. by the that you probably be discussed today man you had you had you had so much to say <laughs> what did you make of this man what did you what did you make of emmanuel uh, situation you know you realize that uh Money is not everything, you know, like, uh, I mean, money, is, money does make life comfortable. Yeah. But uh, I think when you, when you have a lot of it, you, you think it cannot get finished. And so it's a harsh reality that many footballers and athletes out there uh, have had to face. Uh, they trusted uh, people. Uh, many times you've had, like in a Buist case, where the spouse was handling the finances. He concentrated yeah. purely on football. Yeah. Um, he didn't even have dramas like Emmanuel Adaboyo or or uh, this other short, short hot shot who left. What is his name? Uh, Nazri. The, the, no, 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 no. Our striker who left just a season or two ago. Uh, 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 Oba. 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 Yeah. Oba. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was not flashy. He didn't complain. He worked hard. He ran down the flanks, never had, a, a, you know, a peek out of him in, in form of drama or anything. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it was shocking to see that he was kicked out of his own house and the spouse made away with most of the money. And, and that is the story of so many athletes and footballers out there. They say that 40% of footballers find themselves in financial ruin. Yeah. 40%. Yeah. So that's yeah. a big number. You know, it, it means that... Uh, uh, the clubs have to start thinking about this because these guys they spend most of their career playing purely football. They 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 need to start teaching them to do to learn other things other than football to prepare for life after football. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, and so the Emmanuel Lebue case stands out because he's an Arsenal player. Yeah, uh, yeah, and so it's a very very heartbreaking reality. Uh, these athletes dedicate their lives to the game and only yeah. find themselves bankrupt. At the yeah. end of their careers, so, so it's a very, very, very sad, sad, sad thing. No, hundred percent. Just like you mentioned it, you know the thing about what people don't understand about about footballers. You know, as much as fans always hear, you know, making noise about what not. You know, you didn't score, you didn't do this and what not. Forget that these people also have lives to live on the side. These guys have yes. lives to live, and you see, one of the, uh, I think one of the players that are really, really affected by the thing that I'm about to going to talk about next is African players. Recently, I was listening to Mikhail Obi's uh, podcast and uh, in Rio's uh, Rio Ferdinand's uh, show, The Five. He was mm -hmm. talking about you know how African players basically you know uh, they get caught up or they get they get manipulated by their families, whereby you know you you you're basically blackmailed 
to be sending money and some of the guys actually take you down the drain is your own family members you can imagine yeah. a situation where you know, you're earning so much money and you see the funny thing about money when you have money you attract all sorts of people when you're poor but yeah. then nobody wants you you know it's just like me and me and you come I mean, nobody cares about us <laughs> some day we're doing money some day some day we're doing some day we start making money you hear hey man i used to know that guy nini nini blah 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 and what you know money exactly. money comes with all sorts of things you can imagine an african player uh do you know how basically a society is is set up most footballers uh, have come from poor backgrounds you know they yes. they are sort of the saving grace from of yeah, the their saving people. grace you're basically the breadwinner so you find yourself taking care of a whole village a whole village I was listening to Mikel Obi saying he had situations over and I'm actually sorry to say this I'll be sensitive about this you're saying that you know you find like you know your sister uh people actually getting close to your sister somebody probably wants to marry your sister why because you're a football star yes <laughs> then you end up you, know, you end up you end up bringing this person in your life you end up not taking care of your sister you end up taking care of your sister's husband yeah we've had situations yeah. whereby you we've had situations whereby you even your family even comes up with a story i'll give an example by the look at pogba's situation so yes. sad by the way so this financial man man management thing is is something he has been you, banned now he has been banned for four years yeah he's old there's no way he's coming back and he was one of the pro the most promising youths uh we have ever seen in the in football so so now he's going to spend a lot of money in court cases um because of the pressure of family most of his entourage they brought yeah. in drugs alcohol women so he lost yeah. focus and he was very talented and you know some of the other the players who are not as gifted as he is who spent their time wisely and their money they were not flashy they didn't do crazy things they didn't do drugs they didn't do all, all manner of things and that's why you say beyond the pitch outside football you know like uh, you know we we be all most of the time we're discussing what's happening on the pitch but outside the pitch yeah uh, what are the football clubs the agents their families yeah. and the individuals yeah. themselves doing to make sure that they, they don't find themselves in such a situation now why yeah. not why not uh, people who are listening to this conversation we didn't come here like most africans to tell you the <laughs> problems come we are not focusing on the problems because africans are only knowing about broadcasting problems, problems. we are here also no solutions. solutions yeah and other footballers who have avoided the pitfalls of messy divorces mm -hmm. poor financial planning and found yeah. themselves in ruin yeah yeah so uh don maybe yeah. you could pick it up from there what are some of the solutions uh that uh you know uh, uh footballers can do to make sure that yeah. they do not find themselves in dire financial straits because of bad decisions oh yeah i mean the thing is this like you know as much as we even just talking about footballers this is actually a topic that basically affects everybody regardless of the profession you're in whether you're an accountant because financial management is something that affects it cuts across at the end of the day if you have a job you're earning money if you don't manage your money properly you end up becoming bankrupt so even these are even lessons for even me so even as much as they're talking talking about this topic it's more like they are putting it therapeutic and also there's some lessons that are basically you're going to pick from me i'm also going to pick from you but uh coming now, back to your question I want to guide you because there are many sweet topics in there that we can discuss. Yes. And uh with regard to financial management. Yes. So, uh one of them uh, we discussed about a bar situation. You went yeah. to a messy divorce mm -hmm. and uh ended up losing 90% of it, his wealth. He had to go back and start working, you know, odd jobs yeah. to survive. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. before we started this um podcast, right. We talked about uh a footballer who was clever enough to avoid the pitfalls of a divorce because uh he was very innocently loving his wife doing his thing mm -hmm. he knew everything was good yeah uh, hakim you remember i told you oh yeah, hakim, and, yeah. Uh, he was able to outmaneuver a very bad situation then we also talked about prenups yes prenups prenups yeah. are not for poor people by the way all african listeners <laughs> if you're running 30,000 a month it doesn't make a difference you it the cost of of getting a lawyer to do a prenup won't make sense 60,000 
you know, but essentially you still need a plan, but yeah. uh, especially for the high net worth, because this most of these are beautiful women who are chasing people with big careers, big money, and they yeah. know that if they go away with 50%, if somebody is worth $100 million or $200 million, yeah. and you make away with 60 70% and say, oh, I have children, or, you know, then, you know, I deserve this, I deserve that. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case for Akimi, he, they didn't have children, but I don't want to mess up the story. So maybe uh -huh. you could just discuss how another footballer, other than Ebue, yeah. found himself in a nasty situation in the middle of a season and miraculously, it became the viral topic of how he was able to avoid losing a lot of his wealth because the wife went after his wealth after the, the, the divorce. So basically, that is Akimi. So ideally, the whole idea is, let me just say it by the, let me just whisper it, protecting yourself from financial ruin by divorce. Because, you know, when you, when money is, when you, you know, when money is, when you, when you're smelling money, when money is close to you, you attract all sorts of evil people. So Akimi is actually a very good example of somebody who basically knew how to protect his, uh, you know, his his resources. And uh, from what I remember vividly well, is because the, cause the wife basically wanted 50% of his earnings after after divorce, right? And for yeah, some and reason... They didn't, his... children, they didn't have any children. She didn't contribute yes. anything to his success. She just found him rich, already playing soccer. They didn't even have yeah. children, and she wanted yeah fifty percent and a whole lot more. Yeah. Yes. Go on. So this guy, yeah, yeah. So this guy basically uh, linked everything to the mother's account. You know, Akim is Muslim, and maybe <laughs> you know that that no, that. They, that's they, they, let, let, let me make it clear, uh, yeah. so that anybody listening is not confused. He right. didn't put the money into the mother's account. Yes. He basically the contract that he got from PSG. And all yes. his earnings, mm -hmm. he basically legally Links. signed off everything that he owns, everything, including his underwear and everything. <laughs> signed off everything in his mother's name. Yes. So the lady did not know. The lady did not know. So him, mm -hmm. he knew if, he, if she, the mother told told Hakimi that if he, she genuinely loves you. Yes, I mean, if you love your wife, you'll take care of her, you'll pay the bills, you'll do everything. So 100%. Now, yeah, the lady just surprises the, the guy, like, Look, eh, I'm not feeling this thing, and I want a divorce. Next thing you know, he's yeah. being someone with, with the papers from the lawyers, asks yeah. someone saying that they need this and this and this and this because they've been married for this time. Mm -hmm. Little did she know that this guy. Contrary to his mother's advice, I mean, he yes. he had wanted, to, he didn't want to do that, but his mother, his yes. mother insisted. And so, when he when she came up and do this, that she did this. Of course, she sent lawyers and all that. She was very cocky. Yeah. So by the time the two lawyers, the lawyer from Hakimi and the lawyer from the lady, are discussing, mm -hmm. then the lady realizes that the lawyers say, "Look, we would like to give you all the money you're asking for and the properties and everything." But the man you are with is a pauper. Then she says, mm -hmm. how is he a pauper? If he's playing, he's earning X amount. I don't know the exact figure, but the guy mm -hmm. earns millions yeah. in Kenya shillings and hundreds of thousands of dollars a week yeah. you know, from his yeah. football. Yeah. So she didn't understand. Why are you saying he doesn't have money? And he says, you can verify. Check his account. He signed off every single thing. Cars, mm -hmm. Computers, houses, property, mm -hmm. yeah. investments, all of those were signed off yeah. to the mother. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he said, I'm sorry. The, actually, the lawyer is the one who was representing him and said, Look, I'm sorry. Actually, yeah. you're the one who will have to pay him because your your husband owns nothing. So if you want a divorce. His life is the one will be affected because everything yeah. he's earning is not owned by him. Mm -hmm. It's owned yeah. by somebody else. Yeah. So the wife was so embarrassed. Those she she realized she could not win the case. And so this thing went to the social media and it became a talking point because there are so many people who have experienced. Uh, Hello. 
I, I think the, the network disappeared a little bit. So I said there's been yeah, situations yeah, yeah. where yeah. there have been so many other soccer players, yeah, or 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 uh, what do you call it, uh, athletes, celebrities, who not, and yes, who have not yeah. been sharp enough yeah. to prepare for any eventuality. And so mm -hmm. part of what you are supposed to discuss now is what we call a prenup. Yeah, you know. So this is now we are going beyond Hakimi now protecting his wealth using his mother. Yeah, a prenup, because yeah. the truth of the matter is, sometimes, especially in African situations, mm -hmm. you might want to trust your relatives. Mm -hmm. Let me not say mother, father, brother, sister, relatives. Yeah, yeah. You trust your relative, and they are the ones who steal from you. And that's why you said there are some people who've they are like they are they are feeding a whole village back in Africa. <laughs> they come back, they think they have invested, they come back and yeah. they find nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And so they 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 things things go bad. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so that's the story. So that's the story of um yeah, we, we I mean we gave a few pointers in terms of uh protecting oneself from financial ruin because of this. Come, come on, let me just say let me just say this. Uh it's it's so interesting. And funny in the sense that, you know, marriage, marriage back in the day was supposed to be an institution that, you know, is supposed to be set up in bringing for kids life, in the for, right, life. for life and, you know, yeah. bringing kids in the right environment and whatnot. But if you look at a generation these days, it seems like marriage is a bad contract. So imagine in a marriage situation, but you always have to look all over, all over, over your shoulders and, you know, get things legally signed, you know, have a prenup. So what would ask, is marriage a bad contract? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. I don't. I don't think marriage is a bad contract. I just yeah, think yeah. Uh, we focus more on the fame and fortune yeah. because we can't just say it's the wives that are bad. You know, some of them yeah. they see their husbands spending money on women, on drugs, yeah. and everything, and they are yeah. afraid that this footballer is going to eat all the money and come back poor. So some women right. are actually protecting their kids and themselves yeah. mm. from the bad behavior. Of yeah, somebody who can say there are many Africans who came from the village. Now they are in Europe. They have all this money, mm -hmm. right? So they stash yeah. their wife in Africa or somewhere else, uh, and they are not giving money. Yeah, right. But we've known of Braz some of the Brazilian footballers. I don't want to mention names, but they've had scandals where they've even had serious court cases sleeping mm. with minors. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know, like, for example, uh, Benzema almost got caught up in a very serious case of sleeping with a minor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's all these crazy things that happen because of the pressure of football. And then, you know, they're they they, 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 they are going for, especially during preseason, they have these side chicks and they have groupies where they, you know, it's there in, in American football, it's there in basketball, mm -hmm. it's there in football. Like they have these yeah. special parties where the superstars get all mm -hmm. these high-class hoes right yeah and they they sleep yeah. so, so it's not all about just the wives you know or the wives, yeah yeah you no know, sometimes these guys they're so young a 16 year old earning millions he doesn't know what to do with it in mm. fact some of them their parents stop working and take care of them yeah and they're paying the rent they're paying the bills they're paying mm. everything so you'll find yeah. for brazilians because they are very cultured some of them they allow their parents to help them like martinelli is very close to his parents mm. right kaka yeah, the former footballer of AC Milan. His yeah. parents were very influential in their life in terms of how they yeah. manage their money. Our own very own Bukaya Saka. All the yeah. footballers yeah. say Saka is a nice guy. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And why? Because his parents have raised him in a Christian way. He's very mm -hmm. disciplined. He ne you'll never hear him talk badly about anyone. There are games where he's kicked so many times, but you'll never see him retaliate. He'll just do yeah. his talking on the field. Yeah, so so yeah. yeah so John, I, I I I I am with you in terms of saying yes. Marriage institution is is under attack, and I yeah. think rather than continue spreading hate, yeah, on yeah, social media, it. yeah, yeah, we need to be responsible with with the with the tools we have and say that marriage does work. But yeah. you need a plan. If you're a, if you're a young person, you need a manager, you need mm -hmm. a financial advisor, yeah. right? Need yeah. you need your the football the football clubs need to stop focusing yeah. only on training and fitness and also yes. take time to discuss finances with the families and of the, the players. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because no, yes, there's no yeah. use of yeah. putting all this money only to lose all of it. 
Yeah. You know, just right. like you mentioned, and I and if I'm not wrong, if I'm not wrong, I think probably maybe responsible clubs these days actually putting that in fact. I'll give you an example. Remember back in the days, this mental issue, this this uh uh depression thing never used to be taken seriously. I mean, our generation, mm -hmm. the girls who played football our age mates, depression was something that was never yes. really taken seriously. But these days they do take it seriously. Mental health is really, 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 really taken care of. So I'm yes. actually glad that, you know, these days clubs are actually uh, responsible enough to take care, not only take care of the player as a player in the football pitch, but also off the pitch. Because remember, yes. just like you said, or rather we said earlier on, these guys, all you know by there from the age of eight is waking up, getting a ball, getting your boots, gearing up, playing football. So imagine... You don't have time to. I'll give an example. Kwame, if you imagine you're basically in that kind of environment setup, do you even have time to understand things like taxes and whatnot? I'll give an example. Look yeah. at Messi. Messi, Messi had problems by the way with his taxes. He just yeah, because he that... trusted somebody, he only knows yes. football. So that's yes. why they say, you know, the footballers grow in structure. You yeah. wake up, sleep, train, sleep, wake, wake up, train eat, sleep, yeah. go, you know. So once you are out of the football, and remember, most of them retire at 32, 33, 34, yeah. 35. It's only a few mm -hmm. very, very fit people like Ronaldo and gifted yeah. people who can play longer careers up to 40. But most of them yeah. by 32, 33, 34, which means you're still They're very not. young by the time you retire. So you used to wake yeah. up, you're in the gym. From the gym, you go to the video analysis, video analysis, the field, Field, mm -hmm. lunch, lunch, training, training, yeah. home, sleep, like that. Rinse, mm -hmm. repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. But yeah. now, that's structure. So when you're used to being told, go here, do this, go here, do that, go here, do this, money's in the account, bills are paid, then now all of a sudden, you have $50 million in your account, yeah. and you've never managed a business for, for $10,000 or $5,000. And now yeah. you you in you're free to eat as you like. You know, when you're in football, they are going to test yeah. you every day. So if you eat something that is not good, they're going yeah. to see your blood, your sugar, your sugar. If your sugar, your sugar is spiked, your blood, yeah. if your blood sugar is spiked, they know you ate something that was wrong. Yeah. It's going to affect your energy levels. So you mm -hmm. have you cannot afford to eat anything because they are going to test your blood, they're going to do everything, and you will yeah. pay a fine because yes. they are, they need you to be to be fit. So now all yeah. of a sudden, nobody's telling you what to eat. Mm -hmm. up on you and you have yeah. all this money it's dangerous on to the next nice aspect of this financial management which i want you to take up and just yeah. discuss we discussed uh Mati flamini uh there's also sadio mane gilberto yeah. silva i can also chip in but uh the there the are things there are people out there that are actually doing the right thing in as far as yeah. david beckham who are mm -hmm. doing the right thing in as far as planning for the exit plan, the exit plan for soccer, right? Mm -hmm. So we it mm -hmm. will, we will not be doing this podcast justice by just mentioning all the bad things that have happened to footballers. So we, I think you can talk about a few footballers who've made good, sound financial decisions. Maybe you could start yeah. with the, our very own Matthew Flamini, who was a former Arsenal player. He was not one of the greatest, but yeah. as far as, as we are concerned, He's now way richer than Stan Kronk, the owner of Arsenal right now. He's a billionaire in dollar terms. Why? Because he pursued, pursued a passion other than football. So mm -hmm. what discuss um, people who've made the right decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah come on. So just like and you mentioned, we... imagine a footballer, you know, you're playing football. I'm just trying to imagine you're in the room with Bukayo Saka, Saliba, and then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, these guys expect you to be fully focused on football. But then, you know, yeah. you have some who was a geek you know people take you to be a fool people actually even laugh, laugh at you but then you know on the side what you actually become passionate about becomes actually end, ends up becoming you know what you what now fully feeds you like you say yes. this guy actually uh he basically got into green green energy solutions Matthew Flamini Matthew Flamini yeah yes yes he actually got into green energy solutions uh which is actually you know it, it's basically it, Renewable energy, you know, right now, but that's the in thing right now as far as uh, the, the the world is concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll literally give you examples. Yeah, so maybe I could, I, okay. yeah. So so okay, so Matthew, Matthew Flamini, Matthew Flamini was a, a midfielder for Arsenal. He right. was not one of the most 
gifted like Thierry Henry, but he was a professional yeah. footballer, which means he was above average. Yeah. yeah. And so he was a geek, a chemistry geek, and he had yeah. a passion for, for green solutions. Yeah. And uh, of course, if you are footballers, you know, they're all about dancing Africa, Afro beats and, and, you know, just having fun and, you know, just working out in the gym. So it was very yeah. awkward to have uh, a friend who's got into those type of things. So it's something that he had a passion for and he was behind the scenes just studying and thinking about it. And since he had <coughs> money, yeah, he invested on an idea with some Italian uh, scientists. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah and so but he's the main shareholder, so he he was able to do do this uh, after after his retirement, and uh, mm -hmm. it has grown up to be a big deal. Apparently, yeah. solutions are being used by some of the biggest uh, companies uh, in industry, and so yeah. it's, it's a bit technical, but ideally. Uh, it's just green green solutions, you know, like he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's ensured that he's come up with some chemicals that can contribute to industry that mm. are green. They don't destroy the environment. And yeah. long story short, it's made him billions of dollars, billions. So he's even richer. I think yeah. when you finish this, if you're going to do a YouTube, whatever of this, you're going to pick uh, the, the, the thumbnail or the picture and it shows yeah. his, his, his net worth at the moment. He's... he's, he's, he's He's, he's a billionaire in dollar terms. Oh, yeah. And he's, yeah, richer, yeah. Than, than, he's richer than the, the Cronkies. Yeah, but yeah. he was a former footballer. Yeah. yeah. So he's done, he's done well for himself. Another person who we keep on hearing about, we can yeah. talk about our very own Africans, Sadio, Sadio Mane. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's in the hospital, a hospital back in Senegal. He's known to be a philanthropist. He's mm -hmm. also very wise with his money. He doesn't wear mm -hmm. flashy things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... He's very prudent with his investments and he's done yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, Don, maybe you could pick it up from there, you know, some wise words. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you were mentioning uh, David Beckham and also uh, other people who've made some good financial decisions that we can talk about. Yeah, yeah. And actually, even let me just say, even some, some current players who are actually already playing. I'll give an example. I was so proud about it to see that Saka launched his uh, Peri Peri sauce the other day. You know, that's a, those are moves, Banner. I'm really glad yeah, about that. Yeah, he's right now. Is it yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's 22, 23. You know, it's 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 good to see. Marcus Rashford, who actually currently is playing with Man United, is struggling. Rashford, but that's been doing very well for the community. Apparently, apparently during COVID times, he's he. I mean, he was feeding kids. He has Marcus properties. So you know, the whole idea is right now. I'm glad that you know clubs are, are you know are teaching these guys to also invest their money properly. And one of the most important things. That uh, I'm seeing these days, footballers, especially ex-footballers, mastering the art of doing, is social media, uh, getting into social media, YouTubing, and podcasting. Yeah. I'll give an example. Finding a passion of, in sport and and yes. building that knowledge and experience and something yeah. you can do outside of football. What are some of the things that they can do? You're saying uh, being uh, podcasting, what, content I'll, creator, podcasting, yeah, content creation basically. I'll give an example of Gary Neville. Look at Rio Ferdinand. Look at uh, what's his name, Mikel Obi. You know, it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. you see, the, the thing about content creation is these social media platforms have given people a revenue source. And you see, the difference between us and these guys is because because these guys are already known. If you look yeah, at some they have of the people will watch. Yeah, yes. Yeah, if you look yeah. at somebody like Rio Ferdinand, Rio Ferdinand is somebody who's known. This guy just set up his YouTube channel the other day. Right now, there are a million subs. Look at Mikel Obi. Are you the serious? Guy. Yes. The five show. Check a million stuff. subs. A million subs. You see, the, you see, that's the difference between people yeah, like that's some crazy people. revenue. That's some crazy revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, and you see, it's not only about uh the, the, the advantage that you know some of these footballers have, especially if you articulate, because you know, con you know, people think that content creation is just a matter of you know putting a camera before you and you're not know, talking and saying whatnot. So you also need to be articulate. I'm really proud of Mikel Obi. What what Mikel what Mikel Obi is doing right now with his uh with his podcast. The other day he brought Moreno, and you remember yes. Moreno being asked. Yeah, I remember watching that podcast and Moreno being asked who he sees winning the Premier League. It was like Man City, uh, then Liverpool number two, then Arsenal was like Arsenal. Nah. So you see, Mikel Obi by the way is running a podcast. We have uh, Gary Neville by the way. Gary Neville is so articulate. You know, I actually listen to him most of the times. 
you know, the way yeah. he expresses himself. So but let me just let me just throw, let me let me just throw in a little uh, beef there for Gary Neville. You know, Gary Neville, he's 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 he's, he's, he's famous and infamous for all the wrong reasons. He's so <laughs> he knows how to speak so well doing yes. punditry, attacking yes. every coach on why they shouldn't do this, why they shouldn't yes. do that. Yeah. Yet some of Jose it. Mourinho and, and Pep was saying, you know, some of these guys, let them even coach a B team and see what they will do. You know, like he's so good at coaching other people's, uh, talking about other people's ideas. But yeah. <laughs> him himself is not, he, he, I mean, he, he does. He can't coach nothing. He can't coach himself out of a paper bag. So, But you see, Kwame, so, that's yeah, the whole so, idea. That's why, that's why, get this, that's why everybody is a content creator and not a coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole idea. Because let are, we, me tell are you we saying any, are we saying anybody can be a, a football pundit then? Because you can just come in and with Jibi Jabba, you know, just give out uh, spew out rubbish and sound intelligent because you are a former professional. And then that's you know, why he's a content creator. Say, that's the whole idea. That's a, that's 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 why Pep and Ateta but is coaching a team, and that's why they got in everybody they failed in coaching a team. And he's currently doing content creation. Because <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you one thing, coaching is... No, let me tell you, to be fair, to be honest, you know, as much as we talk about players and, you know, we talk about coaching and whatnot, let me tell you one thing, by the way. I'm sure the pressure that comes with that job is something else. Yeah. Coaching. Hey, man, that's yeah. a high-pressure job. But, you know, I can't, just want to imagine what Mikhail right now, what Pep right now is going through. It's a hard job. Because imagine you're managing... You know, you know, you, 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 you know what... what, what needs to happen for Mikel Ateta. He just needs to lose four games for people to start saying Mikel Ateta out. Imagine that pressure. He just needs and to you know, lose four games. And you know, the whole the, what, what really made me now respect these coaches, because there's, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that you're not privy to. When I watched uh, the All or Nothing uh, documentary, that's yes. when I actually got to understand exactly what there's so much that happens behind the scenes that people don't know yeah there's so much that happens behind the scenes so like (laughs) as part of the solution okay anyway we're we're somewhat deviating but as part of the solutions that i'm seeing footballers right now are getting into you know as far as the topic financial management is concerned content creation if you articulate and you feel like you know you you know how to speak Mm -hmm. i mean set Mm -hmm. up a podcast and guys would follow because you know you're already popular you already have a following so mm. I mean I'm just trying to imagine look at something okay, I like think even at Arsenal Arsenal yeah. uh, you know me I'm an Arsenal diehard and also a football purist so I read a lot about not just Arsenal but Arsenal itself and yeah. uh, we know that 80% of the kids in Helland will never come to the first team 100% so a lot of the, a lot of the students in the Helen academy yeah you know they also have classes they are taught about punditry they thought about uh, sports journalism. They thought about so many different aspects. Now, because they have seen how football has messed up, the money in football has messed up so many people and crushed dreams as well. You know, we're only talking oh, yeah. about the Sakas, Rhys Nelson, Nketias. There are yeah. so many names that don't even make it to the first team. And they feel like I'm their dreams you. are crushed. Yeah, and they end up in the second, third division or, you know, they don't even take off at all. Yeah, so all of those guys come into the Hellend Academy. A good majority don't make it, and you know they are, they get into depression, drugs, and all that type of thing. So it's yeah. good to plan for life beyond soccer. So, like yeah. you said, um, uh, getting into content creation. There are so many pundits now who are former footballers. Uh, there's also finding a passion that you're good at, yes. uh, rather than just spend partying and drinking, uh, yeah. you know, in your spare time. Study something. You see, I yeah. cannot tell you to do law. I cannot tell you, like yes. Matthew Flamini, he started chemistry. I mean, he, he, had, a, he, had, a, he had a passion for chemistry. So yeah. um, he's now a billionaire for it. So I won't mm-hmm. tell you to study chemistry just because Matthew Flamini studied chemistry. Yeah. That's why I think most of these football clubs need to stop focusing purely on football yeah. and provide even if it's 10% of their time where part of the schooling or part of the programming or the modeling is about finding about finding out a gifting or a passion they have yeah so that they start investing investing towards that passion early in mm-hmm. life yeah, yeah yeah and 
yep. and also those financial advisors. It's not that they don't go to financial advisors. You said yeah. Messi, you mentioned earlier in this podcast that Messi was caught up in a serious scandal. I think he yeah. must have paid a lot of money to his lawyers to get out of it. But yeah, yeah. The way the way we know Messi, Messi is not a taggish, he's not a clubber, he's a family man. Chances yeah. are a family member or a friend introduced a financial person who was yeah. not vetted vetted so the issue is not about just having financial advisors yeah. the clubs need to have experts go to the club have auditing companies or or consultancy firms vet them then they yeah. say then you you have the right to advise these people because sometimes it's just they're drinking buddies their childhood friends their family mm. members advising yeah. them wrong yeah yeah but uh it's something that is a case by case basis because people like Kaka, people like uh, Saka, and many mm -hmm. other footballers I know, especially yeah. of Brazilian descent, their yeah. parents are heavily involved with their investments and yeah. they do the right investments. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so 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 it's all about understanding your situation. But I, I think all round, rather than uh, risk it, yeah. it's important that the clubs. Because remember where that's where the, these are the people involved in football, the mm -hmm. clubs, the football agents, the mm -hmm. parents, and then friends, yeah. uh, friends. Those are the people who surround the footballer. So yeah. the clubs should organize family sessions. And I like what in our own what Mikel Ateta does. Sometimes he organizes yeah. family days where the cleaner's wife meets with Saka's mom. And so it yeah. creates a family atmosphere. Because sometimes yeah. when you focus so much on football and and money and all those type of things mm -hmm. the human side disappears that's why everybody yeah, keeps yeah. on saying arsenal is like a family you've heard a oh, lot yeah. of the players say oh yeah. what do you think yeah. about arsenal what has what has Mikel Ateta done he has mm -hmm. made arsenal uh have a winning mentality and mm -hmm. it's like a family you know like other yeah. places it's business oh you need to do this go to the gym do that do that and if you don't do yeah. it you know yeah all that kind of thing so the pressure builds up but you know when you're a family you don't you you, you don't feel the pain of struggling or of fighting hard for your family and yeah, if your wives yeah. are involved then your wives don't have to cheat because if you're spending 90 percent of your time in the football club yeah and your wife is not involved in any of the programs your kids are not involved yeah. in any of the programs and yeah, they'll eat yeah. your money and go get go sleep with the with the with the pool boy Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So like you know, just like you said, you know, it's, it's about of getting the right people in the club, people who have been who have been tested, who have been vetted. You know, people understand how a football mind is supposed to be working. Yeah, mm. and, and they understand so much, finance. Yeah. And they understand finance, so that they, you know they get these people in the proper way. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it, it's, it's one of the most saddest things, Kwame, as a human, is coming from here, then dropping all the way down. And you know it's how it's has it's more harsh for them. Imagine you've yes. been earning, say, a million dollars a month. Yes. And then now your career ends at 34. You've been earning a million dollars for say 10 years. And now yeah. in your bank account, it's showing only five hundred thousand dollars. You have kids in university, you have life, you you are a spendthrift because you're used to getting money. So without mm -hmm. a plan, it's dangerous. So I think what you've made very clear from this discussion mm -hmm. is that uh, it's not only important to have your business in the football field, in the football field, yeah. having your yeah. business, uh, you know, doing your business in the football field. Yeah. But beyond the football field, you also have to plan for what you do outside the football field. The football, yeah, and so yeah. I think uh, having discussed the ugly side of poor financial planning, yeah. Having discussed on uh, the ugly side of divorce, having discussed um, lack of planning or of, of structures in place yeah. to plan for financial future investments, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, looking at how all the stakeholders can be involved in preparing these footballers for the future, yeah. uh, I think it's important now that you could close in terms of just... Uh, Give us, giving us a summary of what we've discussed, uh, yeah. you know, the ugly side of football and what you think, especially for African footballers, because we are Africans, we enjoy the, the yeah. beautiful game. Um, yeah. 
what 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 advice can you give them you know with all these pointers we've given and then yeah just uh wind up the show it it was it was interesting to understand you know like uh i mean to see how some multimillionaires can within no time end up being flat broke yeah so oh, no, 100%. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And I, I just actually wanted to say this. Uh, at the end of the day, even to even even me and you, you know, yes. you could have people talk to you, you could have people advise you, you could have people say all these things and whatnot. But after all said and done, it just all depends on the individual. And you see, one of the most important factors that you know people uh, need to put into consideration is discipline. Discipline, but it's the key word. Discipline, because, you know, even right now, Kwame, we are running a show with you. You know, people think, you know, we just come before this camera. People don't know the nights that we sacrifice, but they do, you know, to do these things. So even if you're gifted in talking, even if you're gifted, you know, doing this and whatnot, if you don't have discipline, if you don't have financial discipline, then, it, you know, that's it. That's it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So discipline is actually a very, 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 very key point. I'm hoping by the that, that one day, you know, this, this, this channel grows so that, you know, become financially secure and, you know, secure yes, our, yes, yes. our kids, <laughs> our kids future. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I think that should be it by there from us. Thank you for tuning in and remember yeah, that's it. Uh, it's never about uh, the whistle. Uh, it's never, it, the game doesn't end when the whistle blows. Remember there's still so much by the beyond football. So, Kwame, I don't know if you have any closing remarks, remarks or any advice you probably want to give uh, uh, a player who might probably even come across this maybe 10 years, 20 years from now. You never know where this content by them might, uh, might end up in somebody's, where it might end up. Uh, they say, you know, the financial success that footballers enjoy is fleeting, you know. Um, yeah. It might seem a lot. But, uh, you know, without a clear plan, it's it's just like carrying a bucket of water with a hole at the bottom. When you reach yeah. the destination, you have nothing. And so for anybody listening, this is not just for footballers. Uh, financial structure, financial planning, uh, financial investment planning, uh, and just having a a policy, a financial policy for the family and for the for the footballer needs to be there and not financial policies generated by your 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 your, your body in the in, in in the village or your body in the office you know yeah. you just need to have an expert do the thing an expert who's vetted and it has to be done not when you're about to retire when you're afraid that the money is going to end as soon as you start your first contract you need to have a financial model yeah and that's all i can say yeah yeah, so that's it from guys. Remember, stay informed, stay empowered, and keep scoring goals on and off the pitch. So if you enjoyed today's content, just ensure you like, share, subscribe. We'll be seeing you on the next one. On Come to the next one, brother. On to the next Come one. Come on, you guys.